Hi, Darren here with just a quick editor's note. The footage you're about to see was filmed in 2019, just before we had our computer crash. And like we mentioned in our channel relaunch video, we'll be going through and tidying up all these loose ends so we can bring you a brand new production year in 2021. So stay tuned for that and let's see the main show. Hello and welcome. This is the SN95 Owner's Guide. Joined again with Sean, I'm Darren, and we've got the sixer in the background, our SN95 V6 beater car that we work on. And in this episode, we are talking about addressing your clutch quadrant. Yep. Yep. Why is that, Sean? Because the factory one sucks. Yeah, it sucks. Yours is wrecked. Mine's wrecked. They strip out. It leaves you stranded. And if you deal with cold, like minus 47, mm -hmm. it starts giving you problems. Yeah, absolutely. So in this one, we're going to show you the parts we're using. We're going to show you quickly how to put this together. It's not too bad of a job. Not very technical. A little bit fussy. But hey, we'll walk you through it, show you how to get it done on your own car, and you'll be a much happier driver. As always, we begin at the workbench with the parts we're going to install, and Sean's going to walk us through them. Sean, what do we got, and why do we have these pieces? Well, we have a stock stall clutch cable, standard fare. We have a Steeda clutch cable adjuster, self-locking. Part number 555-7021. It's just an adjustable firewall adjuster for that, because we're removing the ratcheting quadrant. Replacing it with a Steeda unit. Steeda Billet Double Hook Clutch Quadrant, part number 555-7000. Truly a mouthful. Yes, a bunch so, of mouthfuls. So Sean, uh, tell everyone, why are we using Steeda? Because there's lots of options out there. There's UPR, there's Steeda, I'm sure. Pretty much Some every one of their dog Chinese builds knock one. Off. Yeah, Chinese knockoffs are hugely prevalent. Um, in this case, we don't usually recommend Chinese, but you can probably get away with it. Not really a high wear part. Yeah. They, they generally work, but that trick adjuster that you've got, that's one of the best parts. That's one of the best parts. The Steedy unit has a six-way indexable piece in it with a ball detent. So you adjust it to where it hits the detent, you can lock down that worm screw and lock it so it doesn't move. It's one of the nicest features of them. We're using Steeda specifically because we've used Steeda in four previous cars. Yeah, I think we've done four builds, used the Steeda parts just because they've worked. They've that's always worked. Yeah, they've, they've always worked. And that particular adjuster is a nice improvement. The old one didn't have the uh, ball detent, nope. and it didn't have the uh, locking grub screw. And it's what you did is you basically ran some sealant in there, you know, some RTV. And that, that was the early them. ones, yeah. That, that was the real early ones we're used to. Uh, Steed also has the double claw. That is kind of newish. Yep. Most of them, well, at least in my car, was a single. This lets you basically account for cable stretch. Once yes. Once you run into adjustment, you bring it back down, you put it on the second claw. Yes, and it you can also... It extends uh, life. Yeah. And, and also set up for pedal travel. If you want a higher or lower pedal, you can adjust it with this and that together. Right. Uh, one of the other things, the cable. We're using just a bog standard OEM replacement, non-adjustable, because there are adjustable cables. That was the old way to do it, but honestly... This makes that obsolete. Sure does. That way you don't have to crawl underneath the car to adjust the cable. Because when we, you were doing uh, adjustments down here, these would tend to back out, and then you would lose your entire clutch cable while you're driving or drag racing. It was a bad go. Pain in the ass. Yep. And you had to jack the vehicle up to do it. Absolutely. So quick and easy adjustments under the hood. We're going to get to it. That's right. Okay, so we're currently under the car. For this job, you're going to have to be under the vehicle, under the hood, and under the dash. Yep. Yeah, so you're going to have to have some flexibility. We've got a lift, but if you're doing it off jack stands, that's okay too. First step, uh, pull the clutch cable loose. Yep. Off the fork, right? That's right. So what are you doing, Sean? I'm going to use a tire bar. You can also use a pry bar, but tire bar because of the nice curve. Sure. Stick it in the bell housing against the clutch fork. Shove clutch fork down. Pull rubber back. Literally pull out. Dongle end. There you go. And we'll also have to get the little uh, schnibbly bit, the retaining clip. Bit of a big pry bar for this, but... Yeah, Sean's kind of used an inappropriate tool, but... Um, it works. Yeah, there you go. So now this thing is ready to be serviced from the top side. Yep. Now we'll just cut a zip tie. We'll unbolt it from the frame rail. Yeah. And the rest is all up, all up top. Yeah, it'll be good. Easy. It's a good easy start to a somewhat easy job. That's right. 
Okay, so we finished up on the bottom and we've disconnected the clutch cable up top. Now we're gonna to get to the not so fun part of the job. And a real quick story. First time I seen one of these done was years and years ago when I had my old 84. I seen some guys working on a saline badge Mustang. They were in one of those common auto shops where you can just show up and do some work. And they had the entire pedal box removed out of this car and were just tearing at it and swearing the entire time. It turns out it's not that hard. You don't have to drop the pedal box, the steering column, all that stuff, absolutely unnecessary. But it's what you do have to do is crawl up under the dash. Sean's pulled the seat out and Sean is running the camera because smaller of the two guys, I've done this a couple more times and I fit a little bit more naturally. So what you have to do is lie on your back, put your boots in the back of the car, and then climb up under there and actually disconnect the clutch cable from the quadrant side and then take the old quadrant off and the spacers and install the new one. We'll show you kind of what the stacking order looks like on the bench, but for now, I've got to crawl in the hole. To save you the misery of trying to see my underdash point of view, here's a look at a quadrant from a Google image search. First, unhook the clutch cable. This is easy when the lower part of the cable is unhooked from the fork. Next, tackle these clips with a set of pliers, and release the spring you'll see. From here, you can simply wrangle out the old quadrant and tensioner and discard. You'll never use these again. That done, let's jump back to the bench. All right, Sean, that was me grunting and groaning underneath the dash for a while. Very awkward, but we got the old pieces out. Care to walk us through them? Sure. Here's the plastic crop. So you have the factory quadrant. This is the piece that actually goes on the pedal that pushes on the quadrant. It's got a couple springs in there. Goes like that. And this literally, these stupid little teeth, and there's only three of them, push against here. And that ratchets along, and that's what takes up your adjustment. That'll now all be done with this. So interesting fact, if you're doing an aftermarket clutch of any sort that is anything stronger than stock, don't even try and keep this. It will break, it will cause you problems, and you will have to get towed home. We've been there, done it multiple times. Yes. Stock clutch, old, and this one's starting to give up. Hasn't left me stranded yet, but definitely... So you can see those teeth are knocked down. This thing has definitely jumped a few times on the cable, and Sean knew it was going because... To adjust the factory one, it's really cool. You lift up on the pedal with your toe, push down, you hear some clicks, and it's auto-adjusting, it's auto-ratcheting with just that little process. So what happens is sometimes you'll hear clicks as you push on it, and that lets you know it's slipping. That's giving you uh, warning shots that it's gonna go. When it was minus 47 here, it started to cause some problems. Sure, so you're understandably concerned because we've both dr driven home with busted clutch quadrants before. Uh, it's not recommended. And on the daily, in the winter, no. Absolutely not. No. So this Stita piece will keep us safe and uh, definitely give a little bit more uh, adjustability yep. and long-term robustness. And now I get to climb back under the dash and install this piece according to this diagram. It's all very simple, right? Two pins, a little washer, dead simple. You just have to uh, lay in an undignified fashion and curse. under the dash and curse. You curse it yourself. Yep. Time to get to it. Okay, so we're on the home stretch after Sean demonstrated the old quadrant. We've got our spacer, very important, and then your quadrant, and then finally your washer, and you're just gonna use your two spring clips that you've pulled out from inside of there before to retain it all. It's not as bad as taking out the factory quadrant, but still undignified, I'm up under the pedals again. Installing your Steeda quadrant, or any quadrant for that matter, is pretty easy. Install the spacer onto the quadrant pin, then install the quadrant both onto the quadrant pin and the tensioner pin, then install the plastic washer, and then the two retaining clips. Hopefully you didn't throw those in the dumpster with the old quadrant. Now that you have your quadrant back in place, it's simply a matter of hooking your cable onto the cable hook and adjusting at the firewall. Okay, Sean, so I got the Steeter firewall adjuster in. Now we're ready to uh, prep the firewall adjuster, right? Yep. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can literally have this set up so that when you put it in, you adjust it, and you tighten down the worm screw and lock it in place. We're not going to do that because it's a bit of a bastard to adjust because it's right close tight to the firewall, it's hard to get at. So I'm going to pull the little worm screw out, put some Loctite on it, put it back in and set it up so it's a really good stiff detent, but still adjustable. That way it'll hold it in place and with a Loctite, Loctite on the little locky screw, it can't back off so it'll always stay hard detented and I never have to touch that part again. That's your choice on which way you want to do. That's what we're going to do. Should be good to go. Yep. Okay, we have firewall adjuster in against the firewall. 
And when we use two screws that are provided with the kit, we have to install them to hold it in place. You can rotate it so the fingers are lined up with the original mounting hole on the one side, because there's one hole that held the cable in. So we'll run one of them in there, and then the other one will just run in the opposite side in the other tab. I recommend using something powered, whether it's air or electric, because they are self-tappers. So you need a little bit of speed over to get them in. And you'll need a quarter inch socket. It's good. Fit, done. Cool. Simple as that. Now we're on to clutch cable, yeah? Yep. This Which is we good. have to modify uh, just a touch. Yeah, we'll hitch over at the bench and show you what's up with that. And yet again, back at the bench, but now we're talking cables. Yes, we are. Here's a factory 94, up from 94 to 2004, factory cable. So to install this kit in a 94 up car, you have to pull this metal clip off. Then you pull all this stuff off. Bronze bushing goes on the end and the whole works goes into the firewall adjuster. It is different on a 79 up cable, 79 to 93. That's what this one is. You take off all the rubber bits, you file down the four notches, and you do not use the bushing because this is already the same size as the outer dimensions of the bushing. Right, so depending on what cable you have, modify to suit. Yep, but both of them will fit in either car. They're interchangeable in that way. Yeah. Cool, we'll show you what that looks like when it's all done. And two minutes later, Sean's prepped both of the cables just to show you what they look like. So starting with the original SN95 one. So 94 up cable. Here's what it looks like, finished product. You can see why you need the bushing. Goes over and it works. Yep. So underneath here you had a rubber bit. Goes over. You had your two plastic pieces and they literally just capped it like this your metal bit, and a little spring tab. Just cut everything apart, pull it all off, insert bronze bushing, factory cable ready to go back to use. Yep, now your factory cable is junk. It's got yep. a lot of drag, got some rough spots and a kink in it. So we are throwing that one in the into the bin and our replacement is a generic uh, Taiwanese one that is the Fox style, Yep. but no big deal. Nope. So that's the piece that goes on the Fox style. It just goes over, simple, like that. To get it off, there's four little tabby bits. Just take a file to them, smooth them down, pull this off, put it in the adjuster, good to go. Yes, so that one goes in without the bronze bushing. Won't fit because that one's the proper size. Yep. And the bushing is actually to retrofit a SN95 for when they change the design. That's right, because this kit's been around forever. Absolutely. Cool. So we're going to route this cable. I'm going to hook it on on the bottom fork. Then we're going to set it up top side, show you how to adjust it. That's right. Okay. So we've gotten the cable fed in through the firewall. I've hooked it on to the closest hook. Read the directions. Depending on which cable you use, you're going to use one hook or the other. For us using a firewall adjuster, it's the closest hook to the firewall. So read the directions, check it twice, hook it once. Now, Sean, what do you got for us? Okay, a cable tie interval. Right. Because that zip tie... We're not allowed to use that. Right, that's someone else's thing. Yeah. So once you have it on the firewall, there's a couple ways you could do this. You could route the cable all down through, get it in place, lower the car back down, hook it on the quadrant, then go down, hook the other end on the... It's a bunch of work. So instead, we got it on the quadrant. Now we don't want this cable to back off. When we're feeding it down through, it's really easy to bump this, mm -hmm. knock it off, get it in the way, and come off up top when we hook it up down bottom. Yep. So, keep it tight. We're going to zip tie around the cable, come on, go together, keep tension on it, tighten the bejesus out of it. There we go. That nice and tight on there, cut off the excess. So now we can feed this down through and it doesn't matter if we bump it. We can't knock it off the quadrant. Yes, and this has been your cable tie interval. Interval, right. Yeah, now we can feed this through. It just saves the vehicle up and down, up and down. Yeah, because even if you're on jack stands, it is a pain to crawl up and down all the time. Yes, absolutely. So, nope. Sean's going to fish that down past the engine. We're uh, following the original routing, and uh, we'll soon have this buttoned up for you. Okay, we're on the home stretch. We're underneath. Yep. First go, first shot. Made it. It fit. It worked. Yeah, that's handy. 
Cut off the dongly bit. That's the end of our cable tie interval. It is so. One of one. Depending on popularity, we might do it again, or we'll just keep using zip ties without uh, drawing so much attention to it. That's right. So, that through. There. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Get our clip in place. Yeah, that retaining clip's super important. That's in place. Now, looks like we need a little bit of compression. We do. So, Sean's got his lever. There, there we are. Awesome. Now we can go topside and set up adjustment, right? That's what, ideally. Yep. That's what we're supposed to be able to do. Oh yeah, and if you have a good car, there's probably a dust cover that goes over top of this assembly. Be sure to put that back on. Yeah, that's on a, on a nice car. Yeah, on a good car. Yeah. This, this car is not that, so it doesn't have one. No. And the only person that gets offended when we call this not a good car is gone, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, we had an unsub, like rage quit. That's too bad. It's yeah. it's a pretty rough car. And Apparently we bash V6s too much and hate on them, despite the fact that I've dropped about three grand into the V6. Yeah. I don't know what's to get worried about. We're pretty honest about this thing. It's not nice. $1,800 worth of new parts and then about $1,500 worth of upgrades. Yeah. I'd, Why be mad? I, I would have bought a different vehicle, but Sean likes um, odd dolls or odd balls. I do. Yep. Cool. Top side for adjustment. Okay, Sean, so a quick rundown. We've got our quadrant in. Yep. Got our adjuster in. Yep. We've modified our clutch cable and yep. we've reinstalled it and ensured everything is hooked up and everything is good to go. We did. Last thing, adjusting your quadrant slash firewall adjuster. Easiest thing in the world. You just turn the knob till it clicks. And you set it up so that you have just a little bit of slice lock, usually about a quarter inch of play in the pedal. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure when it's running that you, with the clutch shoved in, you can engage all gears, that there's no you know, binding, no nothing like that, providing that it didn't already do that before. Yeah, if your transmission was wrecked before, this isn't going to fix anything. Yeah. You don't want to have it so tight that the steady bearing is hard pushed against all the time, like you want just a little bit of play. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it, just like uh, adjusting a motorcycle clutch, but not as finicky. Yeah, this, this one you've got a lot more leeway, just make sure that you're not always pushing on the pressure plate, Yep. and that it doesn't have so much slop that you can't fully disengage to change right. a gear. It is nearly basically set to taste. Yep. Some people like a little more play, some people want a little quicker engagement, it all depends. Sure. One, one of the best things I've found to do is simply put it in first gear with the engine running, push the clutch in, or sorry, have the clutch in, first gear, go to reverse. If you can go to reverse smoothly, you're good to go. If yep. you get some troubles, try adjusting. That's right. Yeah. But aside from that, we're ready to close this one out. Put seat back in, beat tire out of your car. Yeah. She's done. Okay. And that's a wrap. That wasn't too bad of a job. Uh, Crawl around under the dash a little bit. Sean cleaned his floor out, so that was nice, because uh, laying in the carpet on Sean's car, always questionable. You never know what's down there. Mostly snow and ice right now. Yeah, it's, it's been terribly cold, and this is part of the reason why we did this one. So, we got it taken care of. Parts are great. Setup's good. Highly recommend it. This is the fifth one I think we've installed. Something like that. Yeah, super good pieces. Work. Even if you use the Chinese one, it's way better than the factory plastic stuff. Yep. So, we hope that you'll join us again next time, and as always, please like, share, and subscribe. Later! Later.